Well, good morning, everyone. It is a treat to be here with you today, and I uh, just love this church. Um, and uh, I was telling some people in the foyer before church started that I think I've been here about four different times, and three of the four times, it snowed. <laughs> so if you want to talk to your pastor, if he would invite me in the summer, maybe that would work out better. <laughs> Because who expected it? This beautiful spring morning, amen? <laughs> uh, I, it was a very pretty snow. Did anybody actually watch it snowing at all? Did anybody? Yeah, it was very pretty. And it'll probably be gone by tonight. So I guess that's the best kind of snow, if you ask me. But uh, I'm Toby Schneckloth. And uh, you probably know that name because my family attends church here. My mom and dad, Ron and Julie Schneckloth. Uh, they're not here with us today because they're taking care of their grandkids on the East Coast uh, Because my brother's a youth pastor and he is actually taking a missions trip over in Europe right now So they're watching his kids. I said that's a great excuse to not be there when I preach <laughs> I understand um, And uh, my sister Amy and her husband James and their family are part of the church Do you guys love the Cavans over here? Now, Amy's my little sister, so if anybody wants any stories, come up afterwards. I'd be glad to share lots of things with you, and uh, you can know the real Amy Cavan. <laughs> um, and I also just want to honor Pastor Joseph and his wife, Tammy, for letting me be here, for being great partners with us. I uh, am the superintendent for Assemblies of God Churches and Ministers in Nebraska, but I live in Omaha, and actually I live in downtown Omaha, so I'm only a few minutes away and we got to know each other a couple years ago, and his family are just incredible people. They're involved in many of the things that we do together. And, uh, but just like my parents, Pastor Joseph said, I'm going to be gone today too. Now, I think part of that is because uh, every time I show up, I tease him about things. Uh, I've picked on him before for how he is the fishing magician, right? He's always fishing and catching fish. I picked on him for he got he came to one of our camps, and he was— the person that uh, was whining the most with our nurse at camp, right? You don't think of that when you see Pastor Joseph, right? He's a tough guy, and he's got this great exterior image, but he's a real softy when it comes to getting hurt, you know? And I saw that at camp. And so I thought, man, he's not there today, and I think that might be why. So <laughs> can you guys clap for your pastors? Don't you love them, the halls? Aren't they awesome? All right, so today, if you want to be uh, in the Word with me, open up to the book of Proverbs in the Old Testament. The title of my message is Wise Up, and uh, I'm going to talk today about wisdom, and of course, the best book in the Bible for that is Proverbs. That is a book that's literally known as the Book of Wisdom, and it's written by King Solomon, David's son, who is known as the wisest person that ever lived. God blessed him with wisdom. And so the whole book, every verse, could literally be its own chapter, its own message, its own uh, lesson for us. And so Proverbs is a great book to, to constantly review in your life. If you are trying to get into the Word of God more, I just challenge you to read a verse of Proverbs every day. That's one thing that you can do to just try to grow in wisdom, which is really the, fo the, the focus of my message today. But Proverbs chapter 5. Proverbs chapter 5, and we're going to read the first eight verses. Now, the, the version of the Bible that I want to read this in is the CEV. That's the Contemporary English Version. And that's a more modern version that takes a few of the words and has it more like we would talk if we were having a conversation with each other. And that's one of the reasons I actually do my devotions every morning in this version of the Bible. And I don't always preach from it because probably the most prominent version we see out is the NIV still. And a lot of churches are more uh, accustomed to that. But today I'm going to take us a little bit different. So this is one of those benefits if you have the Bible on your phone. Because you can change the version right over, right? Now if you don't, that's okay. Uh, just follow along. I think the words will be up there on the screen. Here we go. Verse 1. My son, if you listen closely to my wisdom and good sense, you will have sound judgment and you will always know the right thing to say. The words of an immoral woman may be as sweet as honey and as smooth as olive oil, but all that you really get from being with her is bitter, poison, and pain. 
If you follow her, she will lead you down to the world of the dead. She has missed the path that leads to life and doesn't even know it. My son, listen to me and do everything I say. Stay away from a bad woman. Don't even go near the door of her house. All right, let's pray together. God, thank you for your word. Thank you, Lord, that I get to be here and be a speaker for you today. I ask that you would speak through me and help us all to hear your message today about how we can wise up for the kingdom of God. In Jesus' name, everybody said, amen. Amen. What did the scripture say to you? Think about what we just read. What did you, what did you notice? This is a good thing to do every time you hear the word of God. What was God speaking to you today? Some of you might have noticed uh, some of the poetic literature there. That's another thing that Proverbs is part of a collection of books in the middle of the Bible that's called the poetic books of the Bible. And it's because it really is prose and poetry. And so when you read through this, uh, some of those images might have really caught your attention. How uh, the bitter poison, the honey, and the olive oil, and the 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 way of the dead and some of those things. But the thing that stuck out to me most from this, and I'm just going to be blunt honest, women are evil. <laughs> I'm just letting that sit there for a little bit. See, I wanted to see how the response would be. I got to tell you, I heard more ladies laughing than men. And it sounded like an evil laughter. I mean, don't you see? It kind of sounds like that in the scripture here, doesn't it? Like, this is my only text in the immoral woman and stay away. She's poison. Sorry, Tammy. <laughs> I guess I'm picking more on Tammy than I am Joseph today. <laughs> now, I'm the superintendent, like I said, for Nebraska. There's about 300 ministers. Part of my job is when a church is going through challenging times or if the minister has some troubling things going on, I step in and help out. Right? And, and sometimes those are tough conversations. Sometimes we have to discipline a minister. They need to take a break or be restored and kind of go through a restoration process because we, are, we do believe in restoration and redemption. Amen? Amen. Because even ministers are people just like you and I and, and me, and we all make mistakes. But I can tell you this. The, the three years I've served in this role, it's a lot more men that are knuckleheads than women. <laughs> If you're sitting next to your husband right now, that's a good time to give him one of these and say, that, 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 that pastor is a great preacher right there. <laughs> in fact, a lot of the churches I visit, I, I heard an amen over here. <laughs> a lot of the churches I visit, most of the leaders working in the church are women. Come on, ladies, that's a good chance to cheer. Amen. Thank you for being great volunteers, for stepping up and working hard when the men won't. <laughs> but men, let's step up. Let's not let the ladies outwork us, amen? We need men of God. We need women of God that are full of wisdom and good sense. So my role as superintendent, I credential ministers. In the Assemblies of God, we have three levels of credentials, certified, licensed, and ordained. And there's a big process for each one of those. And even next month, we have a big meeting. All of our ministers and churches will come together in the middle of our state. We have 25 people that are receiving a credential. These are people that have worked through education and interviews and background checks and all kinds of wonderful things to make sure that they are, are cut out to be great pastors for the kingdom of God. So I was part of this process years ago. I'm an ordained minister at the AG as well. And, and uh, so I went through this interview process. And I'll never forget my interview because uh, I was sitting in front of these guys that were very intimidating, you know, and, and heroes of the faith. And I'm just a young guy, you know, probably kind of similar to your youth pastor here, Kyle, and, and thinking, oh, man, do I have what it takes. And so they started asking me questions. One of the questions they asked is, do you have a good mentor in your life? Do you have somebody that's teaching you how to be a pastor? And I said, oh, yeah, I've got this man named Rod Whitlock. And they all kind of knew Rod because he was a strong leader in the network. And from my church, I came out of Bellevue Christian Center, just down the road a ways. And then I went on to say, he is such a, and I wanted to say he's full of wisdom. But instead I said, he is such a wise guy. 
and that's exactly what happened. I tried to keep moving, and all of the guys started laughing like crazy. <laughs> these, these heroes of the faith, these people I was trying to impress were laughing. And I said, did I say something wrong? And they said, oh, no, you were right on. <laughs> He's a wise guy. <laughs> you know, in our world today, we have a lot of wise guys, don't we? <laughs> Maybe people that aren't full of wisdom, but, but they're wise guys. How many people here would like to grow in wisdom today? Anybody? I brought some wisdom for you. Kyla, can you help me? I actually brought some wisdom, and it's actually known as wise potato chips. I'm going to pass these out. My, my guests here, they're going to pass these out. Everybody grab a bag. We've got 100 bags of these babies. And if you want to pop it open and just enjoy some wisdom during this message, you are more than welcome to do so. Just be aware, some of these are sour cream. So when we're done, make sure to get a mint before you go say hi to people and greet people. But this is, I'm going to give you wisdom today. If you get nothing out of this message, you will be wiser today in your belly for the kingdom of God. Now, this passage talks about wisdom and good sense. And I want to talk about those two things because both are so important in our lives. We want to grow in wisdom and we want to grow in good sense. That's what we know and that's what we do. It's not enough to just be intelligent, right? We have to put it into practice in our lives. How many people know somebody that's really intelligent but not really good with other people or in specific situations? Yeah. Yeah, sometimes you can be the smartest person in the room but not be able to influence people because it's not just what you know, it's what you do. And so we need both in our lives. In fact, what we know needs to come out in what we do. But I think that's important that it's called good sense because most of us would say common sense, right? Well, what's common may not be good sense. We find ourselves in a world today that has a lot of things going around us that I wouldn't say is good sense, but might be called common sense. How do we know the difference? That's why we need the wisdom of the Holy Spirit. We need the wisdom from God to guide us. And so I want to talk today about three things from this passage that are benefits to exploring the wisdom and the good sense of God in our lives. The first one is it makes us more confident. I think these will be up on the screens. And write these down if you're taking notes, confident. Verse 2 in our passage says, that you will always know the right thing to say. How many people have been in situations where you weren't sure what to say? Oh yeah, comes up all the time. Probably every week, maybe even every day for some of us. If you're in a position where you're working with people, this could happen constantly, multiple times throughout the day, where you're wanting to make sure you say the right things. Have you ever been in a point where you didn't say it the right way, like me calling Rod a wise guy? <laughs> Actually, the funny thing is, I was embarrassed. I think that actually make them like me more. <laughs> you see, when we are full of wisdom from on high, God can get us the confidence we need in those tough situations that we can say the right things because God is leading us. In our lives, we all have situations where we're not sure what to say, where maybe we're left speechless. That's a good moment to pray and say, God, give me wisdom. But even better, that's a good moment where if you've been stockpiling wisdom in your life, it's going to be better for you then. See, one of the things in our lives that can help us be confident and know the right thing to say is if every day we're tapping into the wisdom of God. Every day, every chance we get, we're putting God's wisdom in our lives. And the best way is the Bible in our lives. We need to be people that are constantly in our Bible every day so we can be wiser. See, what you're doing in those moments is you're building up reserves. So when the tough moment comes, you don't even need that quick prayer in the moment because you've got wisdom inside that you've been putting in there daily, daily, daily. And you'll know what you need to say in the right moment and the right way. This will help us to make good decisions in our lives. Um, I'm a big advocate of hearing God's voice. And there's so many different ways we hear God's voice, but one of the greatest ways is the Word of God, is the Bible. That is the voice of God. It's the source of all wisdom. I want to challenge you today, if you do not have a regular practice of getting into the Bible, or if you've tried and struggled, I just want to encourage you, recommit yourselves to that today. 
Another great thing you can do to find wisdom from the Lord, and another great way to hear God's voice is with the spiritual leaders that God has put in your life. I am one of those leaders that I serve a, a, a minister base in Nebraska, and I, I have to take seriously that God could speak to, through me to them. Your pastor is one of those voices for you. Who is a mentor, a leader in your life that you would call a wise guy? <laughs> because that's another way to hear the voice of the Lord. If you are uh, in this place and you're approaching retirement or you're in that, that last season of life, I want to challenge you that one of the great callings God has for people in that place is to be a mentor, is to be somebody that can help others with the lessons God's taught you. I have some great retired ministers that my wife Kim and I get a chance to sit with three or four times a year, and they encourage me so much more than I encourage them. Because I'll mention some of the things that are weighing down on my shoulders and the burdens that I feel trying to run a state. And they'll look at me and say, you'll be fine. <laughs> they've gone through these things. They've encountered it before. And they're on the other side. And they can look back and say, you're going to make it. Don't worry. We all need that voice in our life. I just challenge you, if you want to be a wiser person, don't just get into the Bible. Get into a spiritual person that can encourage you and teach you the lessons that they have. And if you're that person... Find somebody that you can mentor. Talk to your pastor. Your pastor knows the people in this church and could probably line up those connections so that everybody in this room has somebody pouring in to your life. That will make you more confident. The second thing that I see that the benefit of having this wisdom in our life is that we can have clear paths, that God will make things clear to us, not just confident in the decisions we make, but clear choices. Um, one of the things I pray all the time is that God would protect our church in various regions of my state. I have 11 different regions, and I separate them out, and I pray for one every day. And I pray that God would protect our church there. And I list a number of things God's put on my heart that he needs to protect us in. And one of those things is blind spots. Now, there's a lot of things, you know, there's attacks from the enemy, there's churches fighting amongst themselves, gossip. There's so many different things that work against the church of Christ. And I just encourage you, don't be part of those things. <laughs> be part of the solution. Don't be part of the problem. But there's also blind spots. There's things that sometimes are looking behind the scenes that we don't know are there. And when they erupt, they can cause a significant amount of damage. We all have blind spots in our life. One of the reasons we need more wisdom is so that we're aware of the blind spots before they blow up on us. How many people would rather escape all the pain that can come from a, an explosion in your life because of the wisdom of God to plan ahead and be prepared? God can make things clear in our lives to help us with that. You know, uh, it talks about how the, uh, the voice of this immoral woman is like honey, and her temptations are like olive oil. oil. What are those things? Have you ever worked with those things when you're cooking? They're sticky, right? They're sticky. In fact, I prefer not to even use honey because I don't know what it is about me when I use honey. No matter what, it gets on everything. You ever notice that? I mean, I'll just take that little honey bee-looking thing, and I'll just give a little slap, you know, just a boop. What's it called? A dollop, right? And then I sit down, and it's on my hair, and it's on my shoe, and it's on the couch, it's on the remote, it's on my wife's head. I'm like, how in the world did I get honey everywhere? It's sticky. You know, there's a lot of things in our life that we deal with that are sticky. And some of those things you don't want sticking to you. And the wisdom of God will make it clear so you can avoid those things and they don't hurt you down the road. God's wisdom makes us more confident. It makes things more clear. And then finally, number three, it makes us clean. You know, this passage here, verse 8, talks about this immoral lady. And it says, don't even go near the door of her house. Now think about that. What's the sin? The immoral lady. What's the sin? Well, it would be doing wrong behavior with her, right? It would be entering the house and partaking of horrible things. But is walking by the house sin? In this passage, God's saying, if you want to avoid the sin... Avoid walking by the place of sin. The point there is sometimes we make mistakes in our life because we're not careful enough to avoid the things that lure us into those mistakes. When I was a young kid, 
in churches, we talked a lot about staying away from secular music and avoiding alcohol and, and, and staying away from parties and things like that. I don't hear that much anymore. A lot of those things are like walking by the door of the house. And the more you do it, the more you're lured into the behavior that can destroy your life. Our focus should not be how close can I get to sin without doing it, but how far away can I get to stay holy for God? That's the wisdom we need in our lives. If you want to avoid the things that are tearing you down, look for the trigger points. Look for those roads where you're walking by so you can look in the window and, and take a peek. Because I would say to you that that is the beginning of sin. That's the moment where we're already walking down that road. So I want to challenge you to reinforce your standards today. You know, as Christians, yes, there are certain areas of the Bible that we would call gray areas, where it's, it's hard to determine if it's black or it's white. Here's my rule of thumb. If it could be wrong, it's wrong. Because our attitude should be to stay away from anything that even could be. So let's avoid anything that would look like sin in our lives. That's wisdom. It may not look like it. People may not say that about you. They may think they call you holier than thou, or they might say, you know, that you uh, are too religious, or you're, you're flying off the chandeliers, or whatever people have said before. But that's the world's wisdom. God's wisdom would say, good job staying away from the door of her house. I would say each of us in here struggle with behaviors that are temptations in our lives. And each of us know the way that we can flirt with it. We all know. I can go to this website. I can hang out at this location. I can talk to this person or text this individual. I know what to do where I can kind of tease it. And then we find ourselves on the altar praying before God saying, oh, I did it again. Avoiding that text, avoiding that website, avoiding that, in, that trigger point will keep us clean. Will keep us clean for the glory of God. So three things. The wisdom of God makes us confident. It makes our decisions clear. And it keeps us clean. I want to just take a quick moment before I close. Even as I've been speaking, I believe God is always working behind the scenes. And sometimes God taps us on the shoulder and says, that's you. Now, if you've been listening to me, some of you have had that moment. Something I say, <laughs> and God said, I'm talking to you. That's how I want to respond today. If there's something God spoke to your heart, I'm going to be praying in a moment and ask you just to raise your hand. I'm going to ask God to make that real in your life, to help you make a commitment to him and to change your behavior and do the things from this moment on so you can be wiser and wise up in your life. Maybe it's some area of your life like reading the Bible. And God tapped you on the shoulder and said, I'm talking to you. Maybe it's finding a mentor. Maybe it's addre addressing the blind spot. Maybe it was some of those behaviors I mentioned, the music or the things you're looking at or the things you're taking into your body, whatever. But God tapped you on the shoulder. Not me. I'm not pointing anybody out in this room. Well, God is. <laughs> if God tapped you on the shoulder in a moment, I'll ask you to just raise your hand and I'll pray for you. But first, I want to ask you one more question. And the question is again, what did the scriptures say to you? Because that's wisdom. You need to get into the scriptures yourself. The Bible is still and always will be the authority on truth. And I'm not saying that just to a church. I'm saying that to me. So if it is, I need to be in the truth. Let's bow our heads all over this room. If you felt... God tap you on the shoulder about anything. Would you just raise your hand and put it right back down for me? Amen. Hands up all over the room. Thank you for being bold and being honest. I always wait just a little bit because there's always some like me that I kind of debate with God a little. I'm not sure if that was. Well, again, remember my reasoning. If it could be, then go ahead and, and believe that it is. So if it could have been that God tapped you on the shoulder, maybe you should raise your hand as well, just to be safe. Anybody else want to raise your hand? Yeah, plenty of hands. Good job. Any 
and pray for you. Lord, thank you for this message. Thank you, Lord, for the book of Proverbs. And thank you for the Bible in our lives. I pray for everybody here that raised their hand, whatever you're tapping them on the shoulder, Lord, I pray you continue to work in their lives and help them to apply your truth to their life today and this week. Lord, if they're wanting to explore wisdom more, I pray that you would give them, Lord, the tools they need to make that behavior a routine in their lives. Lord, if they're looking for clear direction on a decision right now, I pray, God, that you would speak from on high and that you would give them the right path to take. Lord, if there's a behavior in your life that you've convicted them of, Lord, I pray that they would commit themselves today to start working to get that behavior out of their life, Lord. God, we all pray and ask for more wisdom. We want to wise up for you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Hey, I want to let you know, great job. I was thinking I would hear this a lot during the message. I didn't hear it at all. <laughs> so some of you might be saving your wisdom for later. Hey, that's a good thing, too. That is, that is. Hey, it's a treat to be here today. Thank you for letting me come. I'm going to now turn it over.